As we were leaving, we saw a fire up on our road, and then we just had to completely make up a new way to get out of our neighborhood. On December 30th, the Marshall Fire tore through the neighborhoods of Superior and Louisville, leaving some students without a place to call home. The craziest thing about losing your house is what you have in your car and on your back is all of your possessions. So anywhere you go, you're moving. My first thought was, it, this can't be real. I'm just sitting down here playing video games and drawing my break. Like, why do we have to evacuate? There's blue sky. It was, it was very surreal. Because one of the things that's crazy, and I think a lot of people have noticed, is you start to see the landscape around the houses that have burned, and you know, to see the hill behind my home, and the view that we had was overwhelming. Buck Coleman, Grant Hilton, and Gwen Christensen all lost their houses, but not before making the impossible decision about what to take and what to leave. I was lucky out of my family. I probably grabbed the most stuff. I had a plan set in head that I didn't even realize I had made is I kept all my memorable, memorable things from my childhood, from my friendships, and I had them in this little shoe box. And I, I took this shoe box, I stuffed it in my bag, grabbed electronics, and that was it. I had the clothes on my back and I had these memorable items. And honestly, I 100% uh, I'm very glad that I took the memorable items over clothes. I got four shirts, three pairs of shorts, two, like, two or three pairs of ankle socks. I took my family's jewelry box, their wedding album, and a family photo album. I had to help some of my family members gather their stuff before I could get all of mine. So I didn't get everything exactly that I wanted, but I got, I got a good amount. And even though they knew their houses were in danger, they didn't think twice when others reached out for help. As we were evacuating, my sister got a notice that uh, her friend's dogs were still in their house, and we pulled up and got the dogs out before we left our neighborhood. My dad actually had to run into another neighborhood in his car that was blocked off by the police, so he had to run down some paths and grab a dog that was in their house, and actually their house ended up burning down, so if he hadn't gone in, they weren't home and that dog would have died in the fires. They didn't only lose their houses during this tragedy, but many of their belongings were destroyed, along with the memories those items held. I had one thing, it was, it was my baritone, it was, you know, music is such an important part of my life, and single-handedly the worst thing that I've had to go through is not only losing my house, but, you know, missing my music, or you know, I lost a piano, my baritone, my sister was very lucky, she grabbed her trumpet, but without having that music to cope with that loss, it's been very difficult. So how are these students coping with this tragedy? I've been listening to a lot of acapella. I've been playing my instruments at the high school, which is actually nice. I've been talking with friends, family. You don't know how you're going to react to things like this. There's nothing that can prepare you for losing your home. But I will say that my reaction to it was nothing like I thought it would be. I know my parents, especially my mom, have been a lot more devastated in the moment, whereas mine has been more prolonged because, you know, as I'm going to college, I know I won't be living in that house or would have been living in that house for very much longer. While their houses may have been destroyed, their faith in their community has only grown stronger. And uh, yeah, there have been a ton of people who have reached out to me and my family, and I thank you all for that. For KYOT, I'm Shane Klingensmith.